In today's video, I'm running over all the adventure game demos I played at the Steam Autumn Festival 2020, looking at what amazing games are heading our way. There's some beautiful hand-drawn efforts, classic pixel art, and even full motion video. Love that FMV. Which game should you have on your radar? Thanks for tuning in to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer. And as well as this deep dive into the festival, I do loads of videos on adventure games. So if you love them too, why not hit subscribe? I do need to preface this and say that all these are demos and subject to change in the final games. I managed to play 18 adventure game demos over a five day period. So let's start at number 18. Dom Ruzalok is billed as a horror point and click adventure game based in Russia in the mid 90s from Yukov Butasov. It comes in at 18 for a few reasons. It throws you right in without any instructions and it took me a while to figure out I needed to use the keys as well as the mouse to move around. When I did finally get going some of the items I clicked on did nothing and some I had to be standing pretty much on the right pixel to pick up. It was very rough around the edges. But what I will say is that it was interesting to see the environments of Russia through the mid 90s. Half a dozen characters were peppered throughout, but none were too memorable. But looking at the story as a whole, I think they'll be involved more than they are in the demo. It was okay. At number 17 is Dorian Morris Adventure from Forest Light Games. This tricky anomaly starts with an intro that speeds past so fast I couldn't read it quick enough therefore started the game with not a clue what to do or what had gone on previous. I'd tell you what the plot was, but to be honest, I just don't know. The very first puzzle was complex and if answered incorrectly, it reset itself. Talk about baptism of fire. Most of the puzzles were logic based and almost riddles, which could be fun, but with little room for error, it quickly became frustrating. There was also no way of knowing what to click on no highlighter or hotspot finder. Even if you can click on something, you'd never know as there's no indication at all. I simply rolled my mouse around the screen, clicking on things, hoping that something would happen. It looks nice and sounded nice, but for me, it needed more room for exploration and trying things out before punishing the player. At 16, we have Star Seeker in the secret of the Sorceress standoff. Try saying that five times fast from Benedict Eid, or Eid, sorry. This was a fun, small game, and I mean small in two ways. It was a short five minute demo, and the screen resolution was teeny. It doesn't take itself seriously at all. The mystery on offer is to find our magic book, our keys, and our wallet, all located in a tiny room. To find them, we have to investigate via cross-referencing what we know, what we remember, and in turn what we discuss with a kind of police chief character. There's loads of dialogue here, most of which is funny. Maybe a little too much dialogue for some, including me. When a line or two will do, it tended to go on that little bit too long. The art is wonderful and the RPG kind of style works. I just hope the rest of the game moves a bit quicker rather than being taken up with unnecessary conversations. Into the top 15 now, and the first FMV game I've played since the X-Files in the 90s. Side note, great game that one. Road to Nowhere from 15-Bit Games is a sharp-witted, shocking and brutal look at one man's experience of being involved in a vicious scandal. It's not one for the faint-hearted, as expletives are strewn across the screen often and the issues it deals with are controversial. The choices you make change your destiny and I had fun being both the quiet type and also the total a-hole. Being FMV, there's a risk of some stilted acting, but that's all the fun, isn't it? I wish the protagonist would speak a little clearer though, as his moody, self-deprecating drawl started to grind on me. Overall though, on an FMV scale, he was okay. We slither into 14 with Lunar Axe from Ops Game Studio. This is the only hidden object game on the list as it's not something I normally play. And to be honest, until I started to play it, I didn't realize that's what it was. These games live or die on the art. And for Lunar Axe, it has a great aesthetic. After being trapped in an old rundown mansion, you have to work your way out with sliders, codes, and of course, finding random things. It was nice, 
but I'll leave the full reviews of Hidden Object Games to those who know best. Do you play these types of games? If so, then please tell me more in the comments, as a new series could be born out of my investigation into it. They do look beautiful. It wouldn't be a point and click list without pirates, would it? And here to make sure we have our quota at number 13 is Crowalt, Traces of the Lost Colony from Madcraft Studios. As you know, I'm a sucker for pixels and the look of Crowalt had me at hello, or arr. The characters here are a little larger than the usual pixel games and it adds to the lovely charming game. We're here to search for a lost colony who mysteriously disappeared years ago. There are a few language translation issues where it felt a little stilted, but the story here intrigued me for sure. A mini game involving pouring a pint though took way too long and should have been cut to around a minute rather than almost the 10 that it took. Taken as a whole, I was enticed by this amiable game. Landing at 12 is Capia from 2 for 2 Games. Capia has a deep and rich backstory with some fantastic graphics and I even spoke to Anna from the studio on my podcast which you can listen to on iTunes or right here on YouTube. I could have spent a few hours probing the world on offer but opted to go straight to the puzzles. Unfortunately in the demo about halfway through I did have a game breaking bug but up to that point it was a really good solid demo. It's a game I think you need to be fully invested in due to the lore it invokes rather than a short 30 minute demo and it is one that is pretty high on my Steam wish list. Just outside the top 10 at 11 is the gorgeous Milo and the Magpies from Johann Scherft. A beautiful hand painted game on offer here and one that surprisingly was quite tricky. We are a cat, Milo, and we need to get home but there are some pesky magpies stopping us. Our only hope is to outwit them so cue many obstacles over many different gardens. Some are lovely and clean gardens and others terribly overgrown. To move around, we click on certain items such as a ball or a bike and it activates a movement. And getting from one side of the garden to the other takes more than you think though. It's more of a logic game than adventure game, but the art style and wonderfully calm premise had me smiling. Into the top 10 now and at 10, it's Aurora, the Lost Medallion from Noma Games. Cards on the table here, I played this demo way back before the festival, but it was highlighted as part of the Steam Autumn Festival, so I thought it deserved a bit of light shone on it from me here. We're on a faraway planet in the future and part of a small team who seem to be taking part in hide and seek. We have to seek out several members of the crew, which, for a demo, is absolutely genius. It introduces us to the characters, and helps us navigate the menus. The gameplay is certainly fun and the puzzles fairly tricky. It's fully voice acted too and with the locations and characters looking polished, it's a game I hope to play the day it comes out. We are halfway through now so I suppose if you've enjoyed this video so far, how about clicking that like and subscribe button. I think there are a few games coming up that will become known as modern classics. Whatever Land lands at number 9 from Caligari Games. This weird and wonderful fairy tale evokes ideas of Tim Burton and the Brothers Grimm with an overall tone of Neil Gaiman. We've been cast down into a chaotic underworld called Whatever Land, which is sprinkled with curiosities. Again, choices come into play and we get to be nice and work through the puzzles or brash and just bulldoze through. I chose the former. If anything, the world is exquisitely presented, but I wanted to be able to click and investigate the surroundings more, as there were minimal things to click on. This is a small gripe though. When it hits shelves, Whatever Land is likely to be a roller coaster replayable story. At number 8, we're on Crumpling Paper Chura from Petems. This astounding piece of art is made completely from paper and features music from Floex who created the Machinarium soundtrack. This game definitely has Machinarium vibes, and even though it took only five minutes to get through the demo, it was enough to show this tiny paper guy has a lot of charm and personality to him. I hope the quality of the short demo continues through to the final game, and if so, it'll be a must play. We're finding Trouble at 7 with Trouble Hunter Chronicles. 
Iskonsko Studios' debut game entails just two rooms, and just like Star Seeker, our only task is to leave the room. But first, we need to find a few things and fulfill some tasks. We play an XOS agent based in France, and we're a bit down on our luck after the end of World War II. The intro is stark and poignant, yet it also has flashes of comic touches. The art style here is sparse, yet still feels like it contains some lovely focal points, and with a handy glow over interactable items, it makes the gameplay easy enough. It's all well thought out, and the whole demo was a tiny revelation. After the demo, I spoke to the developers on my podcast, so to hear more from them, be sure to have a listen. Recharging at 6 is Land of Screens from Serenity Forge. We all feel a little overwhelmed sometimes on social media, and Land of Screens takes that feeling and wraps an attractive, engaging story with lovable characters right around it. Holland has just split up from her boyfriend, and after discovering he's posted about it on social media, she heads to our old bestie to talk about it. After a lengthy intro, we finally get to meet our friend, but unsure how to handle an unexpected reunion, she keeps us at arm's length, making us interact with our past. The tale reels you into Holland's life, and with the narrative heaping on some nostalgia, it left me with a warm, fuzzy feeling, and also trepidation for where the full game is going. A dark horse for game of next year, perhaps? If you spend too much time on social media, the only best thing to do is to head over to my Instagram and Twitter and go and like Yak Wax Lips. Come on, how could I not include that right here? It's about social media. It's top five time now, and I think these next five are all corkers, including one that sprung up out of nowhere. At five, it's Honoria Crimes from Colmos. The trailers for this were always a little vague as no gameplay was shown. So to finally road test it and it be great was a delight. We're a newly employed investigator and a murder has occurred. Only it's inside a dream. To work out the culprit, we have to scrutinise the crime scene piece by piece. Literally. The poster on the wall saw it. The rug saw it. The stuff on the shelf all saw it. With each item having a differing opinion and focal point. We essentially interview the room and try to deduct the outcome. We can get it wrong as well, as several suspects pop up. The uniqueness to this kept me wanting more and I imagine there will be replayability. The art style is also pixels but in a 3D environment and I can't think of any comparison to this except Minecraft. I imagine there might be the option to have add-on cases as well if the game is a success, which I hope it is. At 4 and straight out of the blue, is Nine Witches by Indestruption. This was nowhere on my radar, so when I loaded it up and played the first five minutes and found myself chuckling along, I knew it'd be high on this list. The teeny tiny pixel art is fantastic and really helps to add character on what are already two likeable, distinctive personalities. You play as both a genius old scientist in a wheelchair and his helper, both of whom have extra special powers. There was a slight detour into other styles of gameplay, but the setup, dialogue and cutesy pixels were remarkable. Put bluntly, this was a joy to play and entirely fun. Just one drawback for me was the single use of a swear word. The dialogue was funny and made me laugh out loud several times, so I didn't feel the need to add an expletive, but that's my taste. At 3, it's Backbone from Eggnut. As we head to the top of the list, you may see my penchant for pixel art, and my word, Backbone has it in spades. Throw in a jazzy soundtrack, a realistic cast of characters, and a protagonist so damn cool you could freeze a squirrel, it's going to be one of the best games of 2021. We are a PI and have just taken a safe case involving an adulterous otter. Yes, it's the old chestnut, the anthropomorphic detective noir. But at no point does the species of animals detract from the storytelling here. We can also play it different ways, from aggressive thug to cunning detective. And the story? Well, the story that starts so innocently slowly takes a dark turn. It's one I will definitely be playing on day one. I'm excited about Backbone. The penultimate game on my list is Incantamentum from Cloak & Dagger Games. 
There are few games that get me excited just by a short teaser trailer, but Incantamentum did just that when I featured it on my first Trailer Talk video this summer. I was a little nervous about trying it out to be honest, but can announce that this demo is stupendously brilliant. Maybe it's the pixels, maybe it's the dark atmosphere and sparse music, or maybe it's the time period setting. We play as Thomasina, a woman on the hunt for Hobbs Barrow and the mysteries it holds. We don't get too far in this short demo, but it harks back to the classic LucasArts games in style, with added authentic chills. If you love point and click adventure games, then go and play this demo now and add it to your wishlist. If the quality holds up for the rest of the game, then this may become a classic in my book. Which leads us onto the top of the charts. Before revealing my number one demo of the festival, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Please share it with those who also love the genre as much as you and I do. After counting down those 17 demos, my favourite of the entire Steam Autumn Festival is Chinatown Detective Agency from General Interactive Co. This game is seeped in classic territory, but has been updated with tremendous effect. Forgetting the story for a moment, the demo alone took me over an hour and consisted of real-world clue hunting, agility and fatigue point systems, shooting and deducting clues. Add in that riveting storyline and yet again glorious pixel art and Chinatown Detective Agency is hard to beat. We are, once more, a PI and we take on several different cases. It's up to us which to take as they can all lead us down different paths take too much on and we may become overstretched and use our in-game currency too much resulting in us being broke. There has been so much put into the game and in the demo and it all fits seamlessly. The cherry on the top is the added use of voice acting to a truly high standard. Standing ovation for General Interactive Co. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be playing lots of these for the channel in the following months. Tell me which of these is your favourite and did I miss any gems? Be sure to like and subscribe for more and until next time, take care.